Today, part of the pro-Palestinian encampment on the campus of Columbia University here in New York is being taken down, ratcheting down tensions that have disrupted the final weeks of classes and continue to raise questions about the balance between free speech and protecting Jewish students from harassment and threats. But even as both sides agree to continue talks for the next 48 hours there, House Speaker Mike Johnson is due on campus, according to a press release, to talk to Jewish students about the, quote, troubling rise of virulent anti-Semitism on America's college campuses. NBC's Antonia Hilton reports from Columbia. Eugene Daniels is also back with us. And I want to bring in former Ohio Republican governor and MSNBC political analyst John Kasich. He is a senior fellow at Otterbein University, which is my alma mater. Antonia, what is the scene like on campus at this hour? And I wonder what students are telling you. Well, Chris, it is still tense here, even as some parts of the encampment are set to come down because student organizers have agreed to some terms with the university, which includes the removal of some of the tents, but not necessarily all of them. Uh, the removal of anyone who is not actually a Columbia student from the encampment area, following safety guidelines per the New York Fire Department, and making sure that people are not using discriminatory or uh, harassment-style language in that encampment, which the protesters say they were already trying to ensure there. But all the way through the wee hours of the night, students were on edge, thinking that at any moment the school was going to send the NYPD in. And so I, I would say that even as these ongoing negotiations are taking place, Chris, it is incredibly, incredibly tense right now. Take a listen to two folks that our team has spoken with, a pro-Palestinian student and a Jewish student describing some of the environment here. If the university says, hey, no diploma, if you continue in these actions, what would your choice be? Um, I think I would have to think about that, but I would probably stay out here. I think, again, that's a small sacrifice in the grand scheme of things. Honestly, the only thing keeping me together is my friends at this point and the community, the Jewish community here, but we're suffering. Students, administrators, faculty, they will be watching as Speaker Johnson arrives as well here, Chris, and it's created an interesting political layer to the dynamic here because what we're seeing here on campus is now that President Manoush Shafiq has frankly lost all sides. Pro-Palestinian students are furious with her for the decision to bring the NYPD in. They felt that she was threatening them last night with potential uh, law enforcement response if they didn't uh, acquiesce to her demands. And then Jewish students that I speak to say that they feel she hasn't done enough to keep them safe. And we expect to hear Speaker Johnson call for her resignation. Chris. So, Governor, we have seen these protests pop up literally from coast to coast. Tensions have been high, not just at Columbia. Um, extremely high, I think you can say, in some places since October 7th. Uh, students should have the right to feel safe on campus. How do you see the politics of this, and, and how concerning is this? Well, Chris, I, I, I don't really care much about the politics. What I care about is people do have at a university the right to protest. But they and free speech, but they do not have the right to disrupt or take away the rights of others. And universities have to be very firm about this. I've talked to a president of a university who's been at many universities. He said, look, you know, free speech, ability to protest, that's fine. But when it gets into the way of the rights of other people who are at that university, that's where you draw the line and, and you must take action. And uh, so that's sort of my sense about it. I mean, let the free speech go, but at the same time, do not be trying to disrupt the life of somebody else and their rights as well. This is, if we go to the politics, Eugene, complicated. Uh, President Biden has, of course, weighed in here saying there's absolutely no place for anti-Semitism on college campuses anywhere in the country. We should all be able to agree on that pretty straightforward. But Biden also contemns those that who don't understand what's going on with the Palestinian people. There is no end to this war in sight. So how does he continue to navigate this? And how much of a minefield does the White House see this as with all of these young folks uh, either protesting or feeling like their college experience is being impacted by it? 
Yeah, I mean, they're very aware that the protests aren't going anywhere um, for them, even after school is out, right? Young, not every young person goes to college, um, but they know this is, uh, you know, kind of really happening at universities right now. Um, but they also, when they think about the politics of it, this is also for the Biden campaign, the Biden White House, a subset of a subset of a group. Right. And so me and my colleague, Elena Schneider, published a story just last night and it was in Playbook this morning that asked that question, you know, for, for, for the Biden campaign, for the White House. How much is, is this concerning them when it comes to youth um, turnout in November? They already have issues with youth turnout, youth apathy in this election. In every poll, President Biden is beating Trump by, with youth people. But it's the, the numbers, young people, excuse me, but the, the numbers are lower than they were in 2020 for him. And what they say essentially is that they're concerned on like a, on the human level, right? Making sure that the kids on each side of this issue feel heard and feel safe and finding ways to do that. But at the end of the day, when you look at polling and, and a Harvard youth poll came out just last week, um, 2% of, of young people that were polled said that the issue in Palestine and um, in the Middle East was their number one issue, was a huge issue for them. And so they are concerned about it. They know it's not going anywhere. But all the Democrats say, like, it, it's a PR problem, right? You you have the um, uh, the convention coming up this summer. They know that protests are going to happen there everywhere, basically, that President Biden or Vice President Harris, really anyone who's ever been attached to the Biden-Harris um, campaign or administration are going to continue getting protested. And so it's this needle they're trying to thread. And you could see that when President Biden, like you, you know, kind of equivocated and said, I condemn both sides, people who are doing the anti-Semitic things, but also the people who aren't trying to understand the plight of the Palestinians. And I think that is where you're going to continue to see him doing that. He's struggling with that because, one, he is someone who considers himself and called himself a Zionist, but he's also extremely frustrated with what we're seeing in Gaza happening because of um, Benjamin Netanyahu, who, who he is losing patience with. So, Governor, um, so the me, politics me, of this is going... Let me just say one thing sure. here. It's okay to be out there to protest what you see. We, you know, we went through it, uh, Chris, Vietnam War and protests. People can protest what's going on in Gaza. But when this begins to slip into what has been a, an evil in the world for centuries, and that is the drift into, into anti-Semitism. And I'm, I'm not trying to say that anybody that's protesting, you link to that. I don't think that's true. But I myself have experienced this. I built a, a memorial on the grounds of the Ohio uh, State House grounds, uh, a memorial for the Holocaust. It's the only one standing, as I understand, permanently on the grounds of a state house in the country. We couldn't have a ceremony there. Uh, the security people that, uh, that protected the Capitol, that protected me, said, we can't do it. The threat of violence. Think about this. We have a memorial that is, that is reminding people of the, of the slaughter of Jews, uh, the slaughter of homosexuals, of gypsies. We couldn't have the ceremony. We had to have it across the street in the Ohio theater and then be able to come over and unveil the thing. I mean, it's one thing to protest, and I'm all for you know the ability to protest, but we have to all be careful that we don't drift. Anybody drifts into anti-Semitism, and we see it. We gotta separate that anti-Semitism from the ability to protest that war. But when it starts to drift in and when people start, when Jews in particular start to feel threatened, we have a real problem. And we've moved from discussion and maybe perhaps even love, we begin to see anti-Semitism, which is hate. And I don't want to finger everybody. I don't want to, because you, you happen to disagree with the war in Gaza doesn't mean you're anti-Semitic. I'm just saying we've got to watch this, this, the kind of acts that have been happening in the country, the painting of swastikas on uh, on synagogues, that kind of stuff, that is now way beyond the pale. That's not protesting. That's pure hatred. So, Antonio, where does this go from here? As you said, um, there are still incredibly high tensions there. They had this starting, what, at 3 o'clock this morning, 48 hours, where they said they were going to continue to talk. Is there a middle ground that you're hearing about? And to, to also look at the political side of it, is it your sense that this political activism will make its way to the voting booth in November. 
Well, Chris, there are a few things going on here. The first is that these negotiations are very much ongoing, and what the students hope to extract from the administration are assurances that nothing like what happened at Kent State, the entrance of the National Guard, or even a return of the NYPD is imminent. Uh, and we're hearing from organizers that they feel secure at this moment, but that things are still fluid in those conversations. And certainly from the statement that the president, uh, Manu Shafiq, released last night, it seems the school is le leaving their options for what safety, security, and restoring calm uh, will look like open. On um, the bigger picture here, when you talk to students here who are involved in these, so students who identify as Democrats, typically uh, people who have voted for uh, President Joe Biden in the past, a feeling of exasperation, of disgust. Those are words that I often hear when I talk to young people. This feeling like they are put in an impossible position. You know, they identify as Democrats, so they don't want to vote for former President Trump. But they are seeing images of what has transpired in Gaza. It has broken many of their hearts. And so they're really not sure that they are going to vote for this president unless something changes at the national level. Um, and so while this is certainly a story about the tensions between administration at a school, free speech on campus, uh, and safety. It is also very much a national story that is going to have implications for months, Chris. Antonia Hilton, Eugene Daniels, former Governor John Kasich, thank you all.